Hello and welcome back to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbun. Joining us again today is our special ATP Report contributor, Phil Haney, founding member of the Department, Department of Homeland Security, international terror expert, and especially in the field of Islamic Jihad infiltration in the United States, there's no better source than Phil Haney. Welcome back, Phil. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. So let's build on our previous episodes on this subject. Um, you have told us, and I want the viewers now to hear it, that you are working with some members of Congress, taking the information you've shared with us to them, specifically that the United States government is spending my tax dollars and your tax dollars supporting and funding front groups for Islamic terrorism in the United States. And apparently it's not on anybody's radar because it sure as heck is not on the six o'clock news. Without breaking any confidences about who you're talking to, why don't you tell us what you're talking about? Yes, there are efforts uh, gaining momentum in Congress to pass legislation to prevent the very thing that we've been talking about, which is providing financial support to an organization and or an in individual who uh, has plausible connections to terrorism. And of course, that would imply that enforcement of that rule would require some sort of awareness level and research to find out just who these groups might be, which is where people like me would come in. And so I've taken the initiative to reach out to members of Congress who have a role in this effort, which is a really positive thing. We, I, we've talked about some distressing information in the last couple episodes, but I'm glad you brought this up because there, there are bright spots. Uh, there's actually more interest in this area now in 2020 than I've seen it since at least 2006. And that's part of the paradox that I do believe that if President Trump was made better aware of it, he would definitely take action. Meanwhile, members of Congress, there are some who are beginning to uh, become aware of this. And so I've taken the steps to reach out and we're gonna have a series of conversations over the next few weeks and months to see if I can help uh, this legislative effort gain some momentum and maybe even be a little bit more a part of it in the weeks and months going ahead. Well, I'll tell you what, as soon as you know anything, let us know and we'll have you back. This is okay. incredible breaking news and incredibly important. So on the same subject, Phil, Muslim Brotherhood is, is a fairly well-known name now. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt that people who know about them know what they think and they know that the American Constitution, the way of life, the Bill of Rights and the various constitutional protections uh, that we take for granted are the exact opposite of what the Muslim Brotherhood would institute if they had the caliphate flag flying over the Capitol and the White House, obviously. Given all of that, is the Muslim are the Muslim Brotherhood front groups still involved with training law enforcement officials? They're involved with training law enforcement, yes. They're involved oh, wow. with the Department of Defense activities. They are, in they are involved with the Department of State very actively. They're also involved with the Department of Homeland Security and or giving training to my former colleague, CBP, they're involved in the Department of Justice. They're involved in the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The waters of, of their activities are lapping at the toes of the executive branch of the government, right up to and including Vice President Pence. They're involved in academia and education in the interfaith movement. There's no segment of our social political structure that you could throw a dart at and not hit somebody involved with the Muslim Brotherhood. I am so disappointed to hear you report that it's not isolated. It seems to be everywhere. Let's break down a couple uh, examples. Tell us about what's going on at O'Hare Airport in Chicago. 
this is actually the second time that I know of that this has happened. We used to call them VIP tours. We would bring groups in to observe the activities, the day-to-day -day activities of Customs and Border Protection officers. And way back in 06, CARE was invited to look over the shoulder of CBP and watch their, their primary operations and their secondary and the whole operation. Well, it happened again more recently which is all the more absurd because technically another federal law enforcement agency well known as the FBI has actually been prohibited from any kind of interaction with care. And there's that right hand not knowing what the left hand is doing kind of uh, illustration. On the one hand, FBI is not supposed to be working with care, but on the other hand, CBP, Customs and Border Protection, still does work with care unreal I, I i i gotta feel that if maybe something comes out of the house with the several congressmen that you're going to be talking to and they go public on the floor it's going to be really hard for someone to stand up and say uh no 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 let's keep giving them the money i think this stuff is going on under the radar and there's so much money that moves around every day yeah. This is well, yeah, and, and the big around picture, the members the of picture is not that much, you know. Yes, millions is millions in the big picture, it doesn't, you know, make a lot of noise, so to speak. But that's a false notion, too, because anytime you have an ideology, like the Bible says, a little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump you have that kind of yeast being put into our structure, it's gonna leaven the entire structure if not addressed. And that's what I wanna to mention too. Can this be addressed? Can this be remedied? It absolutely can. If I didn't feel that way, I don't think I'd have the, uh, the wherewithal, the strength to even sit here and talk to you about it. Yes, it could be. It's a matter of getting the right people involved and enough of the right people involved to actually go forward through the legislative branch with the help of the executive and the judiciary, all three working together to once and for all finally address the nature of this threat that we're talking about, which is essentially subversion of the Constitution based well, on Article we've, 6. We've talked about it many, many times. You can't be both. No. If you're going to be an American dating all the way back to Jefferson's opinions, which he wrote voluminously in his diary, you have to give up the notion that there is a religion that is superior to our constitution. It's one or the other, according to Jefferson. And he said, you give up your book to the Mohammedans, as he called them, and you accept our constitution, because if you don't, you can't be a member of our new American uh, way of life, especially when it comes to our Constitution. That's right. So in, in, in regards to the administration, um, I know you had mentioned Mike Pence. I, I've interviewed Mike Pence. Um, he's profoundly pro-Israel. He's profoundly anti-terror. And yet you've got some bad news on some of the people that have gotten to the vice president. Yeah? Yeah. In particular, the groups I'm referring to, we'll start with Muslim Public Affairs Council. They seem to be invited to everything in Washington, including the most recent uh, conferences they had on when the DHS was developing their new strategic document for the year 2020, which is focusing on white supremacy, by the way, which is not a legally defined term. But now DHS is focusing their efforts on white supremacy. And I bet you can guess who they've invited to be the arbiters of who a white supremacist is. Oh, don't tell Impact, me. Muslim Public Affairs Council, who then announced quite casually, well, thank you very much for allowing us to participate. And oh, by the way, let, me, let us introduce you to our good friends, CARE who we will be working with in this effort to address white supremacy. And another area that touches Pre Vice President Trump, uh, 
Pence even closer is the Alliance of Virtue for the Common Good, also known now as the Abrahamic Covenant Movement, which is a 100% Muslim Brotherhood influence operation led by a person we've heard and talked about before, Imam Majid Ali, the former president of the Islamic Society of North America, Muslim Brotherhood, who is also the imam of one of the largest mosques out, right outside of Washington, D.C., called Adam Center. Majid is right in the middle of that. They just came back from Rome. And so here you have, every time you turn around, Muslim Brotherhood influence in the faith arena, in the political, in the law enforcement, in the judiciary. And so, yes, it does touch the steps of the White House. Are they also inside Congress giving testimony? Plenty of times. In particular, the House Judiciary with Jerry Nadler, who just happens to be one of the members of the House is trying to impeach the president. And lo and behold, amazingly enough, before the in Intelligence Committee with Adam Schiff. Both of them have also endorsed care and brought them into proceedings to give testimony, which has gone into the congressional record. All of this stuff is easy to look up. It's not secret. And there you have the very same committees that I testified when I was active duty were those. Judiciary, Intelligence, and I didn't mention, but I will, the Homeland Security Committee. Members of MB-affiliated front groups have testified with testimony going into the congressional record in all three of those committees in quite recent times. Phil, I can't thank you enough for bringing this to our attention and our audience's attention. We will continue to vociferously put this information out. America needs to know about it so they can do something about it. And it is my firm belief that enough people talk to the Adam Schiff's and Jerry Nadler's of the congressional committees that they chair, minds can be changed once the data is out there. And if we make a big enough noise, we might even get into the mainstream media. Yeah. Well, wouldn't that be something? Well, that's the beauty of our system. That's why we still have hope. Exactly. We have that checks and balances kind of system. And we, the people, the true grassroots, are still allowed to be part of the process. That's why we do what we do at ATP, right. and that's why we're affiliated with Phil Haney. Thanks for joining us today on ATP Report. I encourage you listeners out there to send your questions into ATP, and if we read one on the air, we will give you a special gift. In the meantime, if you're not subscribed yet to our text message service, please text the word TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, to 88202. 88202. You will be automatically subscribed to our text messaging service. You get all of our videos. It's always free. You don't pay for content at ATP. Special thank you to Phil. We'll be back with updates, especially after Phil talks to the members of Congress that might do something about what we talked about today. And in the meantime, for us at ATP Report, thanks for joining us today. I'm Barry Newsbaum.